February 21st, 2025. Ben Joe is sitting in his hotel room. He's reviewing a routine Ethereum transfer. As the CEO of Bybit, one of the biggest crypto exchanges in the world, he does it all the time. He has a routine. He checks the sender, the wallet address, and the amount. Everything looks right. He hits confirm and approves the transfer. Ben doesn't know it yet, but he has just sent $1.5 billion to the wallets of some of the most wanted hackers on the planet. Hackers who will use it to finance weapons of mass destruction. This is the story of the biggest cyber hack in history. Founded in 2018, Bybit grew fast. By 2025, it had over 60 million users and was the second largest crypto platform in the world. Every day, it processed more than $3.5 billion in transactions across everything from Bitcoin to obscure altcoins. To protect all that money, Bybit relied on strict internal security. Most assets were kept in cold wallets, offline, isolated from the internet. Routine transfers needed multi-signature approval. That means several top-layer executives had to sign off before funds could move. It wasn't a perfect system, no system is, but it worked, for eight years at least. And on that February morning, it still wasn't enough. Despite what movies might tell you, stealing money online doesn't mean typing fast and breaking into firewalls. You don't even have to hack the target directly. That's not what happened to Bybet. The hackers breached one of the company's trusted software providers, someone with access to the transaction system. Then they planted malicious code that quietly waited for the right moment. When Ben Joe reviewed the transfer, everything looked normal, but once he hit confirm, the code activated. It swapped the real wallet address with the one controlled by the hackers. On his screen, nothing changed. But the money, $1.5 billion, was already gone, split into hundreds of wallets in seconds. The hackers then deleted their code, wiped their tracks, and disappeared like they were never there. Bybit moved fast. They offered a 10% bounty on any recovered funds, and within hours, a well-known crypto investigator named Zach XBT was on the case. He's been exposing scammers and tracing stolen crypto since 2021. Just 24 hours later, he tracked down the hacker's main wallet. Bybit paid him $30,000 on the spot. Tracking where the money would end was a pretty impossible job. Within 90 minutes of the hack, the stolen crypto was broken into 40 smaller wallets, around $28 million each. Then the hackers used mixers, tools that scramble crypto across tons of addresses, making it harder to trace. The coins jumped from wallet to wallet like a shell game. Still, something was off. Half the money, about $700 million, just sat there, frozen, like someone got scared, or was waiting for something. The longer investigators watched, the more it all looked familiar. Same patterns, same tricks, same wallet history. Whoever pulled this off had done it before, and every clue was pointing to the same place. Most people's idea of North Korea comes from movies like The Interview or Team America. The country and its leaders are often viewed as nothing more than memes, walking punchlines. But behind those jokes is a real country. A country that can be really dangerous, and one that's armed to the teeth. With almost no exports and no foreign investment, the regime needed cash fast. So it turned to crime, weapons sales, drug trafficking, counterfeit dollars so perfect they managed to fool banks. For a while, it worked. But international sanctions tightened, smuggling routes dried up, the money started running out. So the regime pivoted, away from forgery towards something easier to hide and harder to trace, cybercrime. Hacking would become their new lifeline, and they were just getting started. A hacker doesn't wake up one day and start phishing crypto wallets. It takes years of work. But most hackers start learning all alone in the privacy of their own room, not in North Korea. If a child shows promise in math or science, the government takes notice. 
not with praise, just quiet notes, silent tracking, small nudges toward a very specific future. They're moved into elite schools, like Kim II Sung University or Kim Chek Tank. These places don't teach kids how to get jobs. They teach them how to breach networks, plan malware, and vanish without a trace. Some students get sent abroad, others stay under constant watch. Everyone's performance is monitored. By the time training is done, these students are full-time government agents, ready to break into some of the world's most secure systems, sometimes for the strangest reasons. Lazarus Group operates under North Korea's military intelligence. Their job might be complex, but the mission is simple. Breach networks, steal as much money as possible, and funnel it back to the regime. They started small, targeting banks, government agencies, and financial institutions. But in 2014, they hit something much bigger. That year, Sony Pictures was attacked. Hackers wiped terabytes of data, leaked thousands of private emails, and demanded that a movie be pulled from theaters. The damage was so severe that Sony had to rebuild its entire IT system from scratch. After Sony, the group shifted its focus. They weren't just trying to create chaos anymore. They were after money. Between January 2023 and December 2024, the Lazarus Group stole over $2 billion in 67 separate incidents. That's nearly 60% of all crypto stolen by cyber criminals during that two-year span. They don't use brute force, they don't need to. Fake job offers get them inside companies. Phishing scams trick employees into handing over credentials. Sometimes they just drop a USB stick and let someone else do the work. Banks, crypto firms, and entire economies have lost billions, and it's not sitting in vaults. It's being spent on missiles, weapons, and warheads. Sanctions can hurt a totalitarian regime, but North Korea doesn't just sit back and take it. For decades, Pyongyang built a network of shell companies, middlemen, and secret trade routes. Shipments labeled as farm equipment or medical supplies often turn out to be missile parts. A 2024 investigation found Western-made microchips inside North Korean missiles. They didn't come directly from the US or Europe. They passed through China, Russia, and Southeast Asia, then slipped into Pyongyang. Most of these parts were first sold to legal buyers and then resold on the black market with forged paperwork hiding their true destination. And North Korea isn't just building for itself. Weapons from Pyongyang have been found in Ukraine, Yemen, and Syria. In return, Russia is believed to be sending advanced tank. Cybercrime funds the whole thing. With stolen crypto, North Korea doesn't need banks. Digital currency moves instantly, fueling missile tests and weapons development without a trace. For a country under heavy sanctions, hacking has become North Korea's most effective business model. Since 2017, its cyber units have stolen over $3 billion. These aren't small jobs, just fast, well-coordinated operations that move money instantly across borders. No customs, no inspections, no airport checks. The Bybit hack alone brought in $1.5 billion each successful breach props up the regime. Each digital theft turns into real-world weapons, and the longer it goes unchecked, the more damage it can do. For over 20 years, the regime has tested long-range ballistic missiles. Many of those early tests failed, turning Kim Jong-un into an easy punchline online. But the jokes didn't last. Their missile tech has improved fast, and one reason is simple. Money. Lots of it. Major hacks are often followed by major launches. In 2022, Lazarus stole $540 million from the Ronin network. Weeks later, North Korea fired a series of missiles. 
In 2023, they stole $660 million. That same year, a record number of tests. While there's no direct evidence, US intelligence is pretty sure this isn't a coincidence. Crypto gets converted into hard currency through shadow networks in China and then funneled into North Korea's weapons program. Other countries raise military budgets through trade and taxes. North Korea just steals theirs. Their next attack won't just drain someone's crypto wallet, it will also help Kim Jong-un build another warhead. The Bybit hack wasn't the first, it won't be the last, we can be sure of that. What happens when the next one is even bigger?